What's up guys, it's the Actual Justice Warrior here, and today we're going to talk about Lacey Green. Lacey Green is a feminist YouTuber and former host at MTV who recently came out with a video about her taking the quote-unquote red pill. Okay, I'm making this video. Hi internet, I'm back. Did you miss me? In some sense. I took the red pill a long time ago. It's why I do what I do. My YouTube stuff has always been about the pursuit of forbidden knowledge. The response to this video, for the most part, follows the line between which side of the social justice issue people are typically on. On the social justice side, she's considered a traitor, disgusting, a white girl feminist, which I don't know why that's an insult, but it is, and just a horrible person for daring to want to talk to people on the anti-SJW or quote-unquote anti-feminist side. On the anti-feminist skeptic side, Lacey seems to have gotten universally embraced as a bold move and a big ideological switch, and people are praising her both for her statement that she's taking the red pill and for her desire to want to talk to people on the other side of the issue. Now, I have mixed feelings about Lacey Green quote-unquote taking the red pill, so we'll get the positive out of the way first. I'm actually really happy that she plans to talk to the other side on a lot of issues. Most feminist and social justice warriors, including herself, wouldn't do that in the past, but I think she sees that the only way to progress ideas forward is to actually talk to people who disagree with you, not just call them Nazis because they don't believe in 700 million different genders, racist because they think certain police killings are disputable, and sexist because they can disprove the pay gap. That being said, the reasons she stated for her political change in her video are either the biggest coincidence in the entire fucking world or total fucking nonsense. So let's break down this video so I can show you what I mean. I used to be Mormon, pretty intensely so. You know, when I was 12 years old, there were adults telling me that my spiritual destiny is to be perpetually pregnant. Cute, right? Then, when I was 19, I created a series called Sex Plus, which is dedicated to helping young people who, like me, had been told that their sexuality was bad or wrong, that they're less than because of their gender or sexual orientation, and so forth. So this is the type of stuff that forms the core of my feminism. You see, the first thing she does is try and get your sympathy through an emotional appeal, and she talks about specifically being raised Mormon and being raised sexually repressed. Now, I actually never had a problem with Lacey Green's sex positive videos. I always felt that those were the best parts of Lacey Green and the social justice half of her channel was the worst parts of Lacey Green. But this emotional appeal is tailor-made for the skeptic anti-SJW community. You see, most of the skeptic anti-SJW channels, or at least the ones that have been around for a long time, are atheist channels. So telling a story about how you arrived at your political positions due to religious repression makes a lot of sense if you're trying to appeal to those atheist channels, if you're trying to get sympathy from those atheist channels. A lot of the people running these atheist channels will tell you themselves that they were raised in very strict religious households and they had to rebel against that. So this story is specifically chosen to get empathy from the people that she's trying to recruit later on in the video. But let's move on to the second part of the video. I've recently found anti-SJW channels that are well-cited and reasoned, you know, make some interesting points. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, I agree with that, or huh, I didn't really think of that. And sometimes I disagree, in which case, you know, I still feel it's beneficial for me to listen and consider another perspective. It helps me learn. Social justice communities lately have been arguing that bigoted ideas, you know, this, this harmful speech should be suppressed because it allows the bigotry to spread and to be validated. I'm thinking of campaigns to get people's Twitters banned, you know, book deals canceled, talks canceled, things like that. Ironically, this sounds very similar to the logic that is used by the right to censor sex ed. So all of this comes to a head in a brutally bizarre spectacle that happened last week amongst feminist scholars who appear to be cannibalizing themselves as usual. It all started with a feminist philosopher's publication in the philosophy journal Hypatia about transracialism. So in the paper, she examines arguments that are used for transgender equality and basically finds that that logic can be applied to race as well. And you know, she may well have some things wrong. But instead of refuting her arguments on their logical merits, the academics penned an open letter uh, claiming that the paper needs to be revoked, citing its various harms, including you know, using the wrong word, um, degrading trans people by comparing them to Dolezal, and having read the paper, the accusations that are made in this open letter are a complete misrepresentation of her argument, to an extreme degree, which really makes this whole ordeal all the more troubling. You see, this anecdote is in here to appeal to the people who consider themselves rationalists, or actually I should say they call themselves rationalists, 
there's a lot of evidence to suggest that they're actually empiricist over rationalist. If you actually look at the definition, they're more empiricist than rationalist, but whatever. Anyway, it's a story about how academic freedom is restricted by the social justice left in the academic field. Since a lot of skeptics, atheists, anti-feminists, anti-SJW channels talk about this, this is also designed to appeal to them. Basically, now she's seeing exactly what they've been talking about, and that's why she's moved toward this position. And then she brings it home with the final part. So where does this leave us? I want to continue these conversations, which is why soon I'm going to be launching a series of live debates with feminists and anti-feminists. And there it is. Lacey Green wants to host, host debates between skeptics and feminists on her channel. She will be fulfilling a gatekeeper role and host the good skeptics versus the good feminists to have the debate that a lot of us have been clamoring for. And this is the moment where I stop buying into Lacey Green's transformation. The reality is evidence shows us that Lacey Green is positioning herself in a good financial position to benefit off of these debates. And this is something that she's done throughout her career. Originally, Lacey Green was a cleavage channel. She would always show cleavage because back in the day, the way you got views if you were a woman and you weren't very interesting was you would mash those titties into the screen. Thunderfoot actually did a video on how difficult it is to get this shot consistently for every video. So you could tell that this was very intentional by Lacey Green back then. And it's what helped her rise to popularity. Then she signs up with MTV Decoded and she becomes a total hardcore social justice warrior. Truth is, literally everyone and everything is problematic. And the reason why she did this is because MTV pays for hardcore social justice warriors. They fucking employ Francesca Ramsey. So it makes sense for her to make her positions more in line with MTV. And there's a lot of people on the atheist skeptic community on YouTube who were friends with Lacey Green before she went to MTV and then all of a sudden she cut them off because their views were too un-PC for her and they could damage her in terms of her career. But now that her show is over, Lacey has to come back to YouTube. Problem is, is she burned a lot of bridges here on YouTube. A quick look at her social blade page shows that there has been declining activity on her channel for months. And I know she took a three month break and that can really negatively impact your channel, but the decline started before her three month break. It's actually attributable to the time that she copyright claimed Roaming Millennial when she had no right to copyright claim Roaming Millennial. Phil DeFranco covered it. Lacey Green called Phil DeFranco an angry alt-writer. And then the whole shitstorm happened and Lacey Green started hemorrhaging subscribers and hemorrhaging viewers. She was clearly wrong and she was lashing out against people. And the reason she felt comfortable doing that was because her paychecks were being signed by MTV. Her money wasn't coming from YouTube. So she was able to burn that YouTube bridge in order to maintain her social justice status at MTV. Now that that MTV well has dried up, she has to come back to YouTube. So all of her transformations over time perfectly align with her financial interests. And the idea that you could call yourself a skeptic while ignoring all those trends is ridiculous. This is the most likely explanation for her recent transformation. Now with all of that being said and all of that out in the open, I still think it's perfectly fine for Lacey Green to make this transformation and for her to host these debates, even if it's for financial reasons. The reality is social justice is on the decline. People are not buying into this shit. They're tired of being scared to say anything. They're tired of being calling racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic over everything. And the fact is one of the reasons that social justice is failing is because of their refusal to debate. So whether it's for financial reasons or for any other reason, the fact that Lacey wants to bring these two sides together so that they can hash out their ideas is a great thing. And while she'll definitely profit off of this, the fact that Lacey Green has a huge channel, a huge platform to host these debates, will allow the people featured in these debates to grow themselves. So you'll see a lot of skeptic channels getting boosts that they would not have normally gotten, along with an interesting exchange of ideas. So while I am pointing out that this is a very shrewd financial move for Lacey Green, I don't think that's a bad thing. I'm a free market capitalist, and contrary to the social justice orthodoxy, Capitalism is not a zero-sum game. Lacey Green can benefit financially while exposing smaller YouTube creators to her big platform so that they can benefit financially. I think that's a great thing. And you can't be advocating for a free and open debate of these issues and then smack down the first person that actually steps up and wants to host these debates or steps up and wants to participate in these debates like she did with Blair White. So all in all, while I do think this is a good thing, I don't think Lacey has taken the red pill 
as so many people have said. The reality is, is that this is the most savvy move that Lacey's going to make if she's going to return to be an independent content creator. And even if I think the reasons she presented in her video are nonsense, I actually think the real reasons are totally fine. Anyway, so those are my thoughts on Lacey Green not taking the red pill. If you like this video, then please show me by leaving a like. You can follow me on all my social medias, subscribe for more content. This has been the Actual Justice Warrior. Until next time.